Good day everyone! Last meeting, we discussed about different tools, utensils, and equipment in preparing a specific type of dish. So, this time, let us identify the chemicals to be utilized in cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment. Okay, the question is, what are the chemicals to be utilized in cleaning and sanitizing kitchen tools and equipment? Okay, but before that, let us define cleaning. So, cleaning the process of removing food and other types of soil from a surface such as dish, glass, or cutting board. So, technically speaking class, cleaning is done with a cleaning agent that removes food, soil, or other substances. Remember, the right cleaning agent must be selected because not all the cleaning agents can be used on food contact surfaces like plates, glass, cutting board. Okay now, so we will discuss the different cleaning compounds or the different example of cleaning compounds to be used in cleaning our kitchen tools, utensils, and equipment. Okay, first we have detergents. When we say detergents class, these are cleaning agents, solvents, or any substance used to wash tablewares, surfaces, and equipment. Example, we have soap, soap powders, cleaners, acids, volatile solvents, and abrasive. So those are examples of detergents. Another example of cleaning compound is solvent cleaners. So solvent cleaners, it is commonly referred to as degreasers. It is used on surfaces where grease has burnt on. So, example in class are ovens and grills. Or, those are the areas that need frequent degreasing. So, these products are alkaline based and are formulated to dissolve grease. So, basically, the solvent cleaners is for design for removing a burnt grease from the different surfaces of our equipment. Another example is acid cleaners. When we say acid cleaners, those are used periodically in removing mineral deposits and other soils that detergents cannot eliminate such as scale in washing machines, steam, table, line build up on dishwashing machines, and rust on shelving. So example class, we have baking soda, we have citric acid cleaner, we also have phosphoric acid. So these products vary depending on the specific purpose of the product. So as you can see, uh, when you buy acid cleaner, there is a specification on the at the back part of the box of the acid cleaner next next is abrasive so abrasive glass that is generally used to remove heavy accumulations of soil that are difficult to remove with detergents solvents and acids so these products must be carefully used to avoid damage to the surface being clean. So, as you can see, we have an example here. We have uh, Easy Leaf Kitchen, then we have Lysol, we have Clorox, and we have Lemon Citron. So, those are the example of abrasive. Another example class, so other chemicals used for cleaning and or sanitizing equipment and utensils are the following so we have ammonia we have dishwashing liquid we have chlorine we have carbolic acid timsin disinfectants and soap okay 
All right, so we're done with different uh, cleaning compounds. So the question is, are you ready to clean kitchen tools and equipment? So here are the procedures on how to wash regular dishes. So commonly, this is our task when we are preparing several dish. So after cooking, it is a must that we should wash our dishes. So here are the procedures on how to wash regular dishes. So what are the different steps in washing dishes? So alin ba dapat yung mauuna? Alin ba dapat yung panghuling ginagawa? Okay, the first step is to prepare. So meaning class, you need to prepare your PPE to be used in cleaning or washing dishes. So when you say PPE, that is personal protective equipment like apron, the hat, the gloves, or if you have a chef uniform, can use that, then towels. So reminder, wear rubber gloves if you have dry hands or other skin problem. Then it is a mask that you wear aprons too. Next step is to scrape. So, meaning you need to remove all the leftover food from the plates or other serving dish that you use in serving food. So, scrape all the large pieces of food on the dishes and place it in a compost bin or garbage can. Stack the dishes in the proper order, namely, so on the left top, glassware. Second is silverware. It belongs to spoon, fork, knife, serving spoon, like that. Then chinaware and utensils. So stack them to the right of the sink so that the work progresses from right to left. So remember, when you stack your utensils, it should be first glassware followed by silverware next to it is glassware and lastly is utensil okay okay next step is to fill the sink with water and add considerable amount of detergent so the hotter the water the better is sanitizing and grease cutting properties but use of course tolerable heat like 66 degree celsius or 150 degree fahrenheit so of course not to scald yourself and remember when you are using hot water in washing your dishes it is a must that you use rubber gloves okay next is wash the lightest soiled items first so as i was saying a while ago Start with glasses, cups, and flatware, and then soap each piece individually and rinse in hot water to sanitize. So again, remember, wash the lightest soiled items first. Alright, next step. Wash plates, bowls, and serving dishes. Remember to scrape these items before washing. So that is SOP class. Scrape these items before washing, especially if there are leftover foods. Then, soap each piece gently and individually and rinse in hot water. So remember to keep an eye when you should change the dish washing water. So, of course, from time to time, you need to change your dishwashing water to avoid contamination. Okay, so next step, wash pots and pans last. So, of course, you should start with the lightest soiled items like glass, spoons, followed by the glasswares or the flatwares like 
plates and serving dishes and the last one is our our pots and pans so of course soak them first or put some water wash the pans thoroughly and don't forget to clean the bottoms if anything was burnt or overcooked to pots or casseroles dishes put a little extra soap and water in it and let it stand while you wash the other dishes take note class that any oil residue left will lead to burn food during the next cooking session so kailangan tanggal lahat ng sebo ng mantika na ginamit natin sa pots and pans so to avoid burn uh, to avoid burn food for the next cooking session Okay, next step is to lay your dishes out on a rack to air dry or wipe them clean with a towel. Okay, so it is a must that before you stack your uh, tools, your utensils in a shelves, it is a must that it is dry, okay? So, there's two ways to dry your tools and utensils. So, you uh, you can use the other one. You need to lay your dishes out on a rack or to wipe them with a clean towel. Okay, remember class, there should be no visible matter and no greasy feel. So, I repeat. There should be no visible matter and no greasy feel. So, dapat hindi mamantika at wala kayong anong bahid na nararamdaman when you rub your hands. So, how will you do that? Run your hand over the dish to ensure that they are thoroughly clean. So, if there are still some grease remaining, of course, you need to consider rewashing the item. So, after cleaning your dishes, the next step to do is to rinse out brush, the sponge, and allow drying. So, of course, sterilize your equipment often using boiling water with bleach. So, when a sponge or brush starts to smell unpleasant, throw it away. Okay, after that, you need to wipe down the sink and your tools. So, wipe down the sink, the dish drainer, and dish pan. So, any rugs, dish cloth, or sponge need to be left out to air dry or thrown into the washing machine. So, remember to replace sponges, sponges and rugs frequently. So, kapag madumi na and there is a bad odor or there is a bad smell, tanggalin na, itapo na, throw it away. the tips and warnings okay remember class wash glassware first before greasy pots and pans packet of course kapag inuna nyo ang greasy pots and pans all the grease coming from pots and pans will transfer to the glassware and there is a tendency na mababasag yung ating mga glassware so it is a must that we wash glassware first next Rubber gloves will protect hands and manicures. Of course, if you have manicures, but here in our class, you are not allowed to wear manicures. And allow you to use hotter water for washing and or rinsing. So, another, dishes may be hand-dried with a clean cloth. Katulad ng sinabi ko kanina. Try adding a tablespoon of baking soda to soapy water to soften hands while cutting grease. So, for uh, beautification or para mas malambot, mas maging malambot ang ating kamay, you can add baking soda to soapy water to soften hands while... Alright, another warning class, never, never, never dump sharp knives into soapy dishwater where they cannot be seen. Of course, for safety purposes, huwag maglalagay ng kutsilyo sa 
tubig o sa may sabong tubig na ginagamit nyo sa paghuhugas. Next, laundry detergents or automatic dishwasher detergents should not be used for hand washing dishes. So, of course, so as you can see, laundry detergents or automatic dishwasher detergent is designed for that purpose, not for washing or not for hand washing dishes. Okay, next. Keep dishwashing liquid out of the reach of children. Of course, for safety purposes, baka mainom ng mga bata since hindi pa sila marunong magbasa. So, they keep, you, sh you should keep dishwashing liquid out of the reach of Okay, so here are the tips on how to make dishwashing easy. So, first, Dishes can be washed easily if you keep them under the water while scrubbing them for particles to leave away. So, bring the dish out of the water to check for any missed spots. So, of course, to soften the particles or the leftover particles on the plate. So, para mas madali, you need to soak the dishes on the water, under the water. Next, stacking a few dishes in the sink at a time allows dishes a few minutes of soaking time while you wash another dishes. Next, try uh, drying pots and pans with a paper towel to reduce residue from the pan which causes straining the dish cloth. So another tips. Don't soak aluminum while dishwashing for it. It may cause darkening. So, of course, again, so katulad ng pinag-aralan natin before, pag sinabing aluminum class, it is very delicate kasi may, tenden may tendency siyang mangitim. So, remember those tips and warnings and in dishwashing or in hand washing your dishes. Okay? Okay, so now, after washing your dishes, after cleaning your dishes, the next step is, of course, to sanitize them. So, what are the methods of sanitizing kitchen tools, utensils, and equipment? So, but before that, let us define sanitizing. So, sanitizing class, it is done using heat, radiation, or chemicals. So, heat and chemicals are commonly used as a method for sanitizing in a restaurant than radiation. The item to be sanitized must be first washed properly before it can be properly sanitized. So, of course, you need to wash the dishes properly before it can be properly sanitized. So, remember the word properly. Then, some chemical sanitizers such as chlorine and iodine react with food and soil and so will be less effective on a surface that has not been properly cleaned. So, dapat malinis na malinis ang ating mga kagamitan before we sanitize them. Okay, so let's talk about thermal sanitizing. Ano ba ang thermal sanitizing? Ano pumapasok sa isip nyo when you, when you hear the word thermal? Okay, okay, so thermal, it involves the use of hot water or steam. So there are three methods of using heat to sanitize surfaces. Of course, we have steam, hot water, and hot air. So, hot water glass, it is the most common method used in restaurants. Of course, sa ating bahay, when we're sanitizing scenes, that is the available. So, usually we use hot water to sanitize our kitchen tools and equipment. So, if, ha if hot water is used in the third compartment of a three-compartment sink, it must be at least 171 degree Fahrenheit or 77 degrees Celsius. 
So, again, class, if a high temperature wear washing machine is used to sanitize the clean dishes, the final sanitizing rinse must be at least 100 degree Fahrenheit or 82 degrees Celsius. Then, for stationary rack naman or single temperature machine, it must be at least 165 degree Fahrenheit or 74 degrees Celsius. So, lean items must be exposed to these temperatures for at least 30 seconds. So, how about chemical sanitizing? What comes into your mind when you hear the word chemical? Okay, let's talk about that. Okay, so approved chemical sanitizers are chlorine, iodine, and quaternary ammonium. So there are different factors that influence the effectiveness of chemical sanitizers. So the three factors that must be considered are first, concentration, second, temperature, and the third is contact time. So again, when we say concentration class, it is the presence of two little sanitizer will result in an adequate reduction of harmful microorganism. Too much can be, of course, toxic. So, I repeat, the presence of too little sanitizer will result in an adequate reduction of harmful microorganism and too much can be toxic. So, dapat tama ang concentration ng ating chemicals or the ratio of the chemicals to be used. Next is temperature. Generally, chemical sanitizers work best in the water that is between 55 degree Fahrenheit or 13 degree Celsius and 100 degree Fahrenheit or 49 degree Celsius. So how about contact time? Contact time, it is in order for the sanitizer to kill, to kill harmful microorganisms. The clean item must be in contact with the sanitizer for the recommended length of time. So, maalin either heat or approved chemical. So, to be successful in sanitizing, it is recommended that the clean items must be in contact with the sanitizer for the recommended length of time. Okay, the question is, what are the characteristics of ideal chemical sanitizer? So, basta-basta lang ba tayo bibili ng sanitizer or ng chemical sanitizer sa market? So, here are the list of characteristics of ideal Okay, first characteristic of ideal chemical sanitizer, it should be approved for food contact surfaces application. Katulad ng mga plato or ng mga dishes or mga silverware or tablewares na ginagamit natin. Next, it should have a wide range or scope of activity. So, hindi lang siya basta-basta pang sanitize, rather it has a wide range or scope of activity. So, another characteristic, it should destroy microorganisms rapidly. So, be stable under all types of conditions. So, hindi siya basta-basta nasisira or na-expired. So, ang effectivity dapat niya ay naglalast. Then, tolerate a broad range of environmental conditions. So, it is readily solu uh, solubilized and possess some detergency. And it should be low in toxicity and corrosivity. So, dapat hindi siya, uh, I mean, mababa ang toxic, uh, toxic level and corrosivity level. Then, of course, it should be inexpensive. So, remember, those are the ideal characteristic of ideal chemical sanitizers. Okay, don't you know that the heat sanitizing has several advantages 
over chemical sanitizing agents. So, a while ago, we discussed the different chemical sanitizing agents. But don't you know that class, when you use the heat sanitizing, it has a different advantages. It's because it can penetrate small cracks and crevices. Another, it is non-corrosive to metal surfaces. It is non-selective to microbial groups. It leaves no residues and it is easily measurable. So those are the advantages when you use heat sanitizing. Okay, that would be all class. So those are the methods of sanitizing chemicals to be used or the cleaning compounds. And this, uh, the procedure eh, in hand washing dishes. So do you have any questions? Okay, if none, please proceed to the next activity. Thank you and God bless.